So hopefully it's Christmas when this is uploaded and I'm gonna try to give a more positive, I, I realized my last video was not super positive. I don't actually know when these videos are being uploaded, but I have like a target for this particular video. Owning a local game store is very difficult. Uh, it is probably the most if I own, I'm a patent attorney, I do IP, uh, I also own my own marketing agency as you know a business. I am very good at both, I would say, probably top tier, and it is nothing compared to the work that you would have to own a local game store. A local game store, I, most of them, minus the ones that take massive PPP loans, um, are paycheck to paycheck. They're barely making any income. They're providing a service to the community. That's how I view it. I viewed it as almost a charity, but not quite, because obviously you're not a 501C. You are trying to make money. And if there's an opportunity to make money, you should definitely take that. So you're not charity. But in many ways, you're almost like a community center where anyone and everyone can come in. They don't need to buy something. They can sit down, they can play. If you are a adult like uh, the guy on Facebook who's complaining about the $5 F&M entry fee, you should be more than happy to contribute to the community to keep it alive. Um, I understand that if you are younger and you might not have money and $5 might seem like a lot of money for you and the promo card you get back is only 50 cents. So then you're thinking, well, I can just buy that promo card online. You could. And if you are hard pressed for money, I would suggest that Magic the Gathering really isn't a game for you. Magic the Gathering is a extremely expensive game. And you know, when a single pack at Target or Walmart costs $5 a pack, you know, set I'm talking about, 550, I, I believe, for Brothers War, this may not be for you. And I don't say this as like, you know, oh, I have a bunch, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about like if $5 for an entry fee, like in the Houston Magic Facebook group, is a big deal to you. And you are very, very, you know, you don't wanna pay $5 into the future of the community, then I get that and that's your right to do, but please don't put these stores on blast. If a store wants to charge for tables and chairs and stuff like that, great. And it's not for you, it's not for you. You don't need to burn down that store and just flame them online constantly. And again, his argument would be, oh, I didn't name to mention the name of the store, but you mentioned the location of the store and there's only one store in that location, <laughs> you know. I mean, what, what do you want me to say? <laughs> like, it's kind of go, oh, I didn't name the name, but here's the address. <laughs> what? Um, I think you should be grateful for your local game stores. I am grateful for the ones that I have around me. Uh, I haven't visited them very often, but when I do visit, you know, I talked to just, uh, Steve, the owner at uh, DNA Comics probably a month ago, and I was trying to give him ideas and stuff about, you know, how to sell more cards. Um, they own a business too. A business right now is very difficult, no matter what you are. It doesn't matter if you're a card shop, it doesn't matter if you're Google, Facebook, there's been a lot of layoffs, there's been a lot of people struggling and everyone and their grandmother thinks 2023 will be a very, very difficult year for everybody. Uh, one thing I wanna make it very clear is that when you support your local game store, you do so knowing that you could get a better deal elsewhere. Your local game store will never have the cheapest single card that you need. It will never have the biggest inventory so you can make any EDH deck. It won't have the cheapest prices on booster boxes. That will probably be Amazon by a good margin. It won't have you know amazing sales and many products like Neon Dynasty, Streets of Campana is a lost leader. After a certain point in time, the product just dies on the vines and it's, it's almost like bad, you know, grapes, right? They age to, I mean, you, they aged and now you can't make the wine. So when you buy from your local game store, it's, you know, you are buying so knowingly supporting the community, that community, that specific community of pe people that you meet, that you play with, and that anyone can come in and they can play and they can pay $5 to sit down and 
play for five or six hours, that's what you are supporting. You're not trying to get the cheapest price because again, no one, no game store is saying that we have the best prices. Or they shouldn't be saying that because that's not true because Amazon does. Um, what you're saying is, hey, we have made an atmosphere, we've made kind of a ambiance where you enjoy, you, you feel safe, which is a big deal. Safety, right? You feel comfortable. You know, we have the heater on, we have the air conditioning on in summer, we have the heating on during winter, we got Wi-Fi, we have some TV in the background. You are enjoying the atmosphere, the ambiance. When you go to a nice restaurant, I would probably say 80% of what I'm paying for, I understand, is the ambiance. The chandeliers, you know, all this stuff costs money, by the way. You know, it's not like the chandelier just kind of popped up. No, you, you, when you pay for the ambiance, you pay for, you know, seating, you pay for the chair, you, you pay for the server to have training and to be able to answer questions that you may have about pairings and so on. You're paying for a level of ambiance and atmosphere. So if you love the atmosphere of your local card game, I mean, I wish there was a card game it's called Groovy Geckos, Phoenix Games, Phoenix Games Reborn. When I went to law school in William Mary Law, um, there was a card shop that my friend and I would always go to play at. And we, I mean, we were, I'm, I'm basically we're both massively in debt because law school was very expensive. And we had call, we went straight from college to law school. So we had college debt as well. I had NYU debt. Um, that store went bankrupt because no one paid for anything. The primary reason that stores go bankrupt all the time, game stores, is because no one buys anything. If no one buys anything because they think they can get it on cheaper online, then what? Then why? What? What, what do you think is going to happen to the store? And I wish I had a store that I could support. Now there is no store. People say, "Oh, you own a store." My store is not open to the public. I follow the Alpha Investments model where I have the store just to get the distribution contract, which isn't even that good for Magic, but it's really good for Pokemon. My gosh, I have, you know, Pokemon has been a blast. Uh, and Pokemon has been so fun to open, by the way, as well. But anyway, that's not, that's neither here nor there. When you buy something from your magic store, it's because you believe in him. You believe in the owners, you believe in the community manager, you believe in whoever is running the store. And you enjoy the atmosphere they provide you. That's why you put money in the store. That's why you buy something in the store. That's why you pay your $5 F&M fee. Right. When you go to a casino and you gamble and you lose a lot of money, it's you're paying for the ambiance, the chandeliers, the 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 shiny lights and <laughs> buttons and things of that nature. Um, it this reminds me a lot of you know gotcha games. There, there's whales who pay for everything, and then there's free to play. The whales never complain, and when they complain, your game is dead. It's a free to play players. Oh, I wish I had more of this. I wish I had more of that. Oh, no, this is my time. <sighs> Support your local game store. No other YouTube channel will tell you this because they're all sponsored by TCG Player or Card Kingdom, which is an anti game store, right? Um, your game store doesn't have much lifeline left. And if you enjoy it for two to three years, it's going to be a really cool time. When I had my game store in law school and I really enjoyed it, I really loved it. That was a magical time for me. That was actually one of my favorite gaming experiences ever. It's actually not one, the famous favorite gaming experience. I really enjoyed the, all the other players. They were diverse. There were line cooks at Chili's. There was a guy a working at Target. There were people from community college. There were people from William Mary law, uh, regular undergrad college. It was a fun atmosphere the owners were really nice everything was really good if somebody had a store like that kind of close to me i would i would i would wail on that store and i would be you know i think as one person i could probably wail enough to support the whole ecosystem but without the support of the dolphins and the minnows and all this like you can't just When you buy from a local game store, you're supporting a small business, you're supporting people in the community. And more to the point is you're supporting that the fact that you have a community. 
I don't mind paying an extra, you know, a few hundred dollars to eat at a really nice restaurant because that's really good ambience in Las Vegas. You know, I don't mind paying extra, you know, five dollars to play F and M at Magic the Gathering or at a Magic the Gathering store. Hi guys. <laughs>